I, I'm teaching a seminar this semester, a graduate seminar. Jen is in it on indigenous feminist and queer studies um, in the American Studies Department at UNM. And we have great conversations in that class, but we've been talking a lot about like uh, the relationship between like uh, people who kind of think that indigenous politics should be about peace and healing and culture um, and spirituality. And then those are like the good Indians, you know? Um, and then also like th those are the good Indians who practice that. And the bad Indians are like the red nation Indians, you know, the loud, the loud ones, they're rowdy. Um, they're quote unquote violent. Like, Oh my God, how many times have we been called this? Um, right. in in media, especially in New Mexico, um, and it's part of that good Indian, bad Indian dynamic you're talking about, Kylie, and that um, for the most part, liberals and folks who I think, especially like white folks who want to be are well-meaning um, and really want to support indigenous efforts. Those folks are very into the good Indian vibe, <laughs> you know, like you said earlier, they want to be good Indians. Um, and so they like peace police indigenous people and um, especially women, like somehow indigenous women, even though we're like killed at higher rates than any other group of people in this like on this continent somehow we're supposed to be silent like like kiss my ass you know like that's just that's literally the opposite of the entire history of indigenous feminism and like mmiwg like where have you again where have you been for the last 10 to 15 years there's like no excuse not to know that that's a prevalent current in indigenous struggles um and that you you actually can't speak to indigenous women that way. A whole a huge part of the movement has been about indigenous women refusing to be silent any longer. There are literally reports called that <laughs> about gender and sexual violence against indigenous women. And so I think it's just important, and including for indigenous folks who are, you know, healing is a real thing. Don't get me wrong. I'm a person who has a lot of joy and peace in my heart. Um, as an indigenous woman, that, that that's the prayer that I carry for sure. But when you wield those kinds of things um, to silence indigenous women or to peace police, um, the militant elements of the struggle that we absolutely need in order to advance um, the largest struggle for indigenous liberation, you're engaging in a liberal, a very kind of neoliberal tactic to depoliticize, you know, and to really like gut the the momentum of these movements that are truly revolutionary, they're not really radical, they're just revolutionary in the sense that like we, we carry the understanding that we need a fundamental transformation and a shift, right, in how we relate to each other and to the world if we're ever gonna have a future as a species, you know, or if our nations are gonna have a future. And so that's the medicine the Red Nation carries. So when you hear like Kylie and Cole like throwing down, <laughs> and Dana throwing down the megaphone, that's the medicine that, you know, they're, it's good medicine. God, that medicine, especially from indigenous women, it's the, it's the most powerful stuff we got in our arsenal, you know, in our legions as we're building this struggle. So don't silence that. You're just like, you're just holding back the struggle. That's the wrong thing to be doing. And this applies to any of you <laughs> who, who are doing this, or especially non-native people who take up space on indigenous front lines. Um, I know you've probably been told that that's okay for you to do, but you ain't ever gonna find a Red Nation frontline where that's gonna be okay, you know, because we actually understand those things. <laughs>